What's up, everybody? Brett Mix here for Mixer Madness. We're doing the Monday Night Wars. This is week 67 for the WWF side. The 195th episode of Raw it took place January 27th, 1997. It was on the USA Network from Beaumont, Texas. Ratings were for Raw 2.2, and for Nitro this week, there are 3.6. This was the 31st week in a row where Nitro beat Raw. Now, after this two weeks loss, the total scoreboard is 17 wins. 48 losses and 2 draws. This is the final Raw that's just 1 hour. From now on, every Raw is 2 hours after this episode. And this is the Raw that is the final Raw and Raw 1 hour Raw with the Drew 2.2. is brought to you by Vince McMahon the King and good old JR. We opened the video package with Brett last week talking about the final 4 in a video package. Talking about how he was getting screwed by the WWF but how he accepts the final 4 challenge. We open the show with uh, that video, and Austin says to Brett, "You ever since you came back, you've done nothing but cry." So uh, there's tension between the final four, who all meet on pay per view, with the winner getting a shot at Shawn Michaels for the title. That's what it was booked to be until Shawn lost, vacated the title. But we're not there yet. Crush versus Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed comes to the ring, packed, packed with his "You're going down" chant to Farouk. They show Savio Vega at a house show in Madison Square Garden, turning heel, joining the Nation of Domination. Uh, cool how moments back then happened on house shows. They weren't afraid to drop title belts or make major angles start there because they, they always start filming. So they just showed a replay of it makes the Madison Square Garden shows feel like you're not, you're not going to miss something. You're going to miss something if you don't go. That's a smart booking by the WWF back then. Uh, Crush jumped, jumped Ahmed from the beginning with a double axe handle blow to the back and worked on his kidneys the entire match. Ahmed's bruised kidneys, ruptured kidneys that his opponents always work on. Crush usually works on the back, the upper neck anyway, but with Ahmed, he just, yeah, it was it was just simple. Him and Ahmed had been facing a lot lately. They faced off in the Royal Rumble. I believe they, was, I believe they started the Royal Rumble, if I'm not mistaken. The rumble that happened about eight days before this. Uh, Crush flies off the top rope with a clothesline. Farouk then came out. Ahmed Johnson was set into the steel to steps by Farouk behind the referee. And Crush continued to take it to Ahmed on those those injured kidneys. Then Farouk sets him up behind the ref as the ref starts to now play attention as he was distracted by uh, the nation. Uh, he was. He starts to pay attention, and the crush gets his heart punch, and he does a heart punch to Ahmed Johnson, which sends him down for the three count, as the nation helped him. So I read the match a, star, a half a star. Ahmed backstage chased after the nation with a two by four. He tried to find them. Doc Hendricks promotes the final four and other house shows in Canada. Then they show clips of Shotgun Saturday Night with the edgy female strippers. And uh, how it's all nighttime there, and they have a cool setup, and uh, they're pretty just try trying to get over Shotgun Saturday night. Now we have a promo with the final four. Shawn Michaels shows up with the WWE title first, though, and says, Big Man says, No longer a dream. Is, is this a boyhood dream? This is a reality. He says he's got the title, and this ain't a dream no more, and he's going to stop at nothing to protect this reality of Shawn Michaels as the WWF champion. That's probably a shoot. Uh, then Brett comes to the ring and says, predicting the future somewhat. He says, just stay healthy. All you have to do is that and then come come up with an injury. It's, it's, he says, don't come up with an injury and come out of this. Brett Hart predicted the future. I'm sure if Sean didn't have the idea already then, that gave him the idea right there. Okay, I'll just have an injury. Then I'll get out of the title match because Brett and Sean were booked to face off WrestleMania 13, as we all know. Or maybe you don't know, but now you know if you didn't. Um, yeah, so that's what Brett says Sean has to do. And then the Undertaker comes out and says to Brett that you've been screwed. Well, I've been screwed for years, and I've been overlooked. And he says it's time that the WWF title comes to the dark side, and the fans cheer. Austin then comes out. And he's, he brings interviewer Jim Ross with him, as Jim Ross wasn't at the announce table at this point. King and Vince were. So he brings Jim Ross with him to, call, to for a microphone. Uh, interesting that they did that. Usually somebody comes out from the back and they have a microphone in hand. But to make sure he had a microphone, he brought out Jim Ross, his own little microphone guy. So Austin takes the microphone from Jim Ross's hand. 
and says that he is the toughest SOB in the WWF. That's the first time I've heard him say that. So that's a first. Uh, in the entrance aisle, he he looks for the other uh, opponents and Vader's right behind him but by the raw, the raw letters. Vader's standing right there. So Austin looks back and sees Vader. And Austin says, you all piss and moan about anything you want to, but when the time comes, Austin will be the winner. Austin said, on second thought, I'm going to not wait till February. Stone Cold looks into the camera and says, on second thought, I'm going to whoop your asses right now. And the crowd cheer, and Austin goes to, uh, to attack Brett, but then the officials come up and separate them. And then Vader, Vader came closer to the ring. To, he didn't get on the mic. He was the only one of the four that didn't get on the mic. But Sean got on the mic, so those were four right there. But of the final four, which is outside Sean, which is Vader, Austin, Taker, and Brett, Vader was the only one that didn't get on the mic. But there was a pretty good segment between the final four. They had you got they got you hyped up to see the match, and we're still a couple weeks away, I believe. So, good stuff there. The British Bulldog with Owen Hart took on Doug Furness with Phil Lafon. Furness sent into the corner by the Bulldog with a high vertical suplex, a reverse chin lock. The British Bulldog stomped away on Furness and covered with him with a lateral press. Bulldog slammed Furness into the corner, a chopping war. Bulldog gets some momentum off the ropes to run at Doug Furness with a clothesline. Bulldog sets Furness up for a pile driver or a power bump, but he's countered into a back body drop. Doug Furness hits a back body drop against Davy Boy Smith. They get back up and they chop away, and the forearm smashes. The Bulldog sets him up for a snap suplex and gets it into another near fall. Then another reverse chin lock. Owen on the outside says, says Furness gives Canada a bad name. He's like his brother Brett. He's a loser, Owen says on the outside. <laughs> a bunch of rights into belly belly overhead suplex by Furness to the Bulldog. Then a power slam, but only a two count. Furnace with the power slam, not the running power slam by the Bulldog. Furnace just hits a, a Randy Orton type power slam off the ropes. And uh, he gets a two against the Bulldog. And then a Hurricane Rana, but Bulldog uh, slammed his has slammed him as a counter move. Owen inadvertently hit the British Bulldog with a slam. He is, his Irish whipped to the ropes. And Bulldog got reverse Irish whipped. So Bulldog was hit with the slammy and not Furnace. Yet the Bulldog still managed to get up out of the pinfall to Sunset Flip. He reversed the Sunset Flip and held the legs down, similar to the SummerSlam 92 Bret Hart Wembley Stadium match finish, where Bulldog holds the legs for a bridge. That's what he did here. He was going to be Sunset Flip after he got hit inadvertently with Owen Slammy. But instead, he, he held the legs down, did Bulldog, and Bulldog gets the three count successfully. At the end, David Boy Smith wins, and then he argues with Owen about how he hit him with a slimy after the match. More dissension among the ranks between the tag team champions as they get a little bit heated at each other. I rated the match a star in three quarters. They show clips of Savio Vega turning on uh, Rocky Maivia and Ahmed Johnson at the house show and then joining the Nation of Domination. They show clips of a press conference of Tiger Lee Sang signing with the WWF. He, he's been trying to sign with them for a long time. The main event is the Godwins versus Mankind Invader. Vidius Godwin and Mankind go at it and takes in and slams Mankind. Mankind doesn't reach out to take Vader. He just wants more punishment because he's crazy. Mankind takes uh, Vader in eventually and Vader does uh, bear clap to Phineas Godwin a bunch of rights. And then uh, Mankind takes back in and takes it to Phineas and overpowers him. Mankind ducks a clothesline and hits a mandible claw, but Phineas went for a suplex. Vader prevented the suplex by holding Phineas, by holding Mankind's legs down from the outside on the apron. Vader then came in and clobbered off Phineas. Henry Godwin tags in, and Henry and Vader go to an all-out brawl. Uh, Henry missed an elbow drop off the side ropes. Vader hits his drops his weight onto Henry Godwin with a bear clap. Mankind accidentally hits Vader with a chair as Phineas on the outside ducks, and the ref calls it a DQ. In the end, the, the Godwins win by DQ. I rated the match a star and a quarter as Paul Bear is asking Mankind, has you lost your mind? If you have to have a mind to lose it, though, Paul. So Mankind, with his half a ear, just looks up and he costs Vader the match. In the end, McBan promotes next week's Raw, Raw as a Royal Rumble Raw. And the first two-hour Raw will be next week on February 3rd. Uh, this episode scored a quality rating of 4 out of 10 because every match was subpar. Luckily for the shows, they get better as they go to 2 hours. So, uh, yeah, this Raw drew a 2.2 in the ratings. You can see why. Nitro did a 3.6. And again, I give it a 4 out of 10 average rating. Or quality rating, I should say. Just below average. 
So we'll see what the next Raws have in store. That's this week's Raw. I'm Brett Mix. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe, and I'm out.